All right, welcome to lesson two, where we'll be setting up our form and server action logic. Okay, so this is where we left off in the last lesson. And right now what I'd like to do is to uh, basically define our function that's going to be handling the form submission. So inside the starter code, you see we have an on submit handler already defined on our form. And it's supposed to run a function called handle register and pass the event object into it. So we have to right now actually define this function. So I will do it right below the state here. Let's say const handle register. Okay. Let's take in the event. And the first thing we'll do is prevent the default behavior. So let's do e dot prevent default. Perfect. So now let's just try console logging the values inside our form fields. Now to do that, I will be using the form data object in, uh, that's available in JavaScript. Uh, you could also create separate states for each input field, but I just um, prefer to go with the form data object. So, so let's go ahead and define a variable called form data. And we're going to say new form data and pass in the e target. So what this is going to do is create an object where the keys are going to be the uh, whatever is in the name attributes of our form. So for example, in here, you can see we have a full name in the name attribute. And then for the phone, we have a phone, etc, etc. Okay, so Let's actually extract these so we can console log them. So I'm going to say const full name equals to form data get. So we're using the get method on the form data object. And we're going to say full name. And we'll do the same thing for the other fields. So this one is going to be phone. Okay, and then this one is going to be email. And finally, the number of spots. So I believe I called that num spots, or it could just have been spots. Let's just check here. Oh, it's just called oh yeah num spots. That's what it is. Okay, perfect. So that's looking good. And now let's just console log this. So I'm gonna say console log logging form fields and let's just list them so full name phone email and num spots okay let's go back so i'm going to open the console here and let's just type in some dummy data here so i'm going to say uh, john smith uh, just a bunch of sevens for the phone number smith at hotmail.com and for number of spots we're just going to say two let's click register and there we go we can see this data here we have our john smith the name we have the phone number we have the email and the number of spots so that's working well good so we'll leave the form component uh, in this stage right now and I want to switch over to the uh, actions so we can start uh, coding this out a little bit okay so inside our server action um, I'm going to actually paste some code just to save us some time and then I'll go through it step by step okay okay so what we'll be doing here is we'll be making a request to the Google scripts URL which we're going to set up in the next lesson so don't worry about it for now and we're going to be making a post request so we're defining our method here as post and setting up our headers as content type application json and then inside our body we're going to be passing in all this information uh, for our event right now i am hard coding the um, event field here just because um you know we are 
the website is set up for just one type of event, which is the pottery workshop. So it's fine to do this. And then we will be getting the rest of our information dynamically from our registration form and passing it uh, here. Okay. So next, below this, if there is a, some kind of a problem adding our form data to the Google Sheet, we're going to throw an error with this message. Uh, the message actually is not really that important because the user is not going to see it. This is just for ourselves for now. Um, and if the uh, process is successful, so if the form data is added to the Google Sheet, we will be returning this message to the user saying success, you have been successfully registered for our Pottery Workshop. And if there is any kind of error, including this error, uh, we will be just returning one standard error message saying, oops, there was a problem with your registration. Okay. So that's how this code is structured. I hope it makes sense. Now, let's just complete it because we do have uh, several more things that are missing here. First of all, the Google script URL, currently we don't have that defined anywhere. So for now, let's just um, define it at the top here. So we're going to say Google script URL, and we're going to make it an empty string for now. Okay. As I said, we will get this in the next lesson. Um, next thing we need to do is we need to take in the form data from our client. So from our registration form. So let's say here form data. And we have to just extract um, each value from each of our form fields, right? So remember, we have a full name, first of all. So we're going to say const full name. And then basically, we'll do what we did here. We can actually cut this code from here because we won't be doing it uh, here. So just cut that and paste in here. Perfect. So. We're getting all of this data and then later on we're passing it in here. Okay, perfect. So that's looking good. Let's actually save this and let's go back to our registration form again. So let's just complete our code for the handle register function. So again, I'm going to paste some code in here and then uh, explain it step by step. Okay, so after we prevent our default behavior, we're setting our pending state to true because uh, we're about to to submit our data to the back end. So when that happens, you'll see here that our button is going to say processing. So when the is pending state is set to true, the button says processing. Um, and then it's also disabled. So that means we cannot click it. Okay. After this, we're getting the form data from our form and saving it to the form data variable. Remember, this is going to be an object with key value pairs. And then we're going to make uh, a request to our backend, so to our server action. Now, here we have a wait underline. That means this has to be a sync. Let's not forget that. Okay, so after the, we get a response from our server action, if the response contains a success message, we'll be setting our submit success state to true to the message. Okay, and we'll be showing this message to our uh, users. And if there's an error, we'll be setting our set submit error to the error message. And after that, no matter what the outcome is, we're sending the spending state to false. Okay, so I hope this makes sense. Let's save that. And I think this is all set up and good to go. So in the next lesson, we're going to uh, dive into the Google Sheets and the Google App Script code. We'll set that up and then we'll be able to make a post request to that. So I'll see you in the next lesson.